We talked about earlier with that tornado warning that left southern Houston County on into Peach and Crawford. This is in Crawford County where we got these pictures from Lynn Chancy. I appreciate these coming in. This was uh, from a little while ago in what is no doubt tornado damage here with some of this. You can see them snapped up at the halfway up these trees. Uh, this is again is in the um, where was it again? I had it just a second ago. It's in Crawford County and of course we've had reports of numerous uh, trees down, power lines down as well. And we're going to go on now to our reporter, reporter Austin Love, who is at that spot in the Butler Auto Storm Lab driving through that area. Austin, what do you see? Hey, Ben, yeah, live here right now here in our storm lab. Let me turn you around. This is really where uh, everything you'd be able to see. You can see all of this, uh, definitely a, a tornado that came through here. We're here on Avera Road. You can be able to see some of that damage there on the ground. You'd be able to see these uh, emergency crews right here. They've uh, There's also power crews right here because a big tree fell over right, right here on the right side of your screen. And hopefully you can be able to see that. Took down a power line with it. Um, not sure if they were able to cut off power at this time, but power crews are out here as well as other crews as well. Um, it's, this is right here by a house. So a house is right to the right there. You can be able to see right on the, um, the roof of that house, a blue tarp. So some damage must have happened there with a tree falling over, but here's the real damage is what happened with this, uh, th this tree falling over right here on the power lines and definitely be able to see as we're heading south, we're about 35 minutes south of Macon here in Crawford County. Definitely tornado passed through here. It's reported that this happened earlier today. And then, uh, so yeah, crews right now being able to clean this up, uh, but definitely um, this is the uh, aftermath of a tornado as uh, Hurricane Michael is starting to show those outer bands, uh, knocking power lines down and also taking down trees. So uh, yeah, this is really the damage right now. And actually we're, sta we're at a standstill right now. They're not even letting us through because uh, of, of these big, this heavy machinery right here that's still trying to get this tree out of the uh, middle of the road here on Avery Road in uh, Avera Road, excuse me, here in Crawford County. But we're gonna be bringing you a lot more up to date um, here. So stick with us here at uh, WMAZ.com and also on air. But now back to you. All right, Austin Love, we appreciate that. This is looking out over the Perry Georgia National Fairgrounds right now, and you can see with the flags waving here, the wind coming on in, the rain coming in. It has been uh, an afternoon that has already seen batches of rain. And then, of course, with the tornado warning, that tornado warning when it was in southern Houston County at one point was only five miles south of the fairgrounds and then move toward the northwest. Here's a look at some of your current winds. These are actual sustained winds. So you're looking at 15, 20 to 30 miles per hour. But when you look at the wind gust out there, it's starting to pick up. Cordial just a little bit ago was at 53 miles per hour. So those bigger numbers that we talked about are starting to move on in. So if you're in Eastman, it's getting windy. You're going in Americas, and definitely when you get on back over into Albany, places like that where the center of the storm is approaching, it's much gustier than that. So uh, rain again, that was the tornado threat that was in there for a little bit with some of those outer bands. Most of that has made its way northward, but now we're seeing new cells that are coming up here on the top side. And of course it kind of makes you dizzy if you look at this screen. Clearly a lot of spin going on. We'll watch these and see if we see anything else uh, that will pop up as far as rotation or any sort of tornado warning right now, I'm not seeing anything like that, but we keep checking all of these. I talked about it earlier this afternoon. A lot of times with these systems, you'll see them pop up for a little bit and then go away and it's like playing whack-a-mole. You know, you kind of see a tornado, a little spin for a second. As soon as you get to that one, the circulation's already gone and then you go into another one. So right now it's mainly quiet with rain and wind. And again, as we go farther toward the southwest, that's where you can see the eye of the storm. Good news a little bit ago that the storm continues to weaken. When it came on shore hours ago, it was at 155 miles per hour in the sustained winds. That's dropped 40. It's now 115, so it's a cat three. If it drops another five miles per hour, then it's a category two. It's moving north northeast at 13 down from 16 miles per hour on the last advisory. Here's a look at tropical warnings. You have a tropical storm warning anywhere in central Georgia. So no matter where you are, you have the potential to at least have tropical storm force winds that is greater than 40 miles per hour, but we should see numbers higher than that 50 60 in some spots as you go farther toward the south hurricane warning in the pink here. Some of those winds could be even higher. Some of it in the beginning there in places like Cordial could start off at 70 plus uh, miles per hour as we get on into the next couple hours or so. The new track that came out shows and you probably wonder why we're looking at the track. The things on land. We know what's coming this way. This is important because you're looking at the potential for maybe still some hurricane force winds are just below it into a strong tropical storm force winds. 
This is like at two in the morning. It's already getting kind of past Macon into Wilkinson, maybe Lawrence County here. And that's important because that means the storm, if it has enough forward speed, may actually get on through here. Um, still probably somewhere in the early morning hours of tomorrow, but it, it keeps showing each time we look at the track that it's moving a little bit faster. All right, so here's a look at the RPM model. It's going to show you as we get on into around nine o'clock or so. Let's see where it's 625 now, probably eight to nine o'clock. It'll be somewhere near Albany. Then we go forward into around 11 o'clock midnight tonight. Here's the actual center of the storm and you can see the rain and wind wrapping, uh, wrapping around right here. As we get on into around two or three in the morning, you can see most of the rain, heavy stuff maybe is making its way out of our area with the center kind of right here. So it looks like, you know, there's not much going on on the other side, but that's the quieter side of the storm. Probably not gonna see as much in the way of rain, but the wind will still be whipping around here on the back side. Let's get on into around eight in the morning and you can see things pulling off toward the northeast. Your probability of seeing those tropical storm force winds it is mainly from my arms south and eastward. So anywhere from Butler, Macon, Milledgeville, and then points south and east for the potential for 40, 50, 60 mile per hour winds uh, in some of these areas. With the new map over the past couple hours or so, this has dropped down sharply as you go farther off toward the north here. But a good chunk of central Georgia has the potential to see this. How about hurricane force winds? Well, I talked about it. If it's still hurricane force when it gets in, uh, later tonight, if it's still holding together with those kind of speeds, places like Cordial, the first places that it encounters, uh, obviously are going to have the greater percentage chance of seeing that. And depending on when it weakens into a tropical storm, uh, that's when we'll see it go from hurricane force to tropical storm force winds and your percentages drop off. And they definitely drop off when you go farther toward the north there. So it's mainly tropical storm force winds as far as all of central Georgia, but the potential is there for higher stuff when you go to the south. Here's around 10, 11 o'clock tonight. Uh, looking at Cordial, definitely showing 63. The potential is there for higher numbers than this. This is just a model here, so these aren't exact numbers. As we get on into the, and it went by too fast again. Let me back it up here so it doesn't look like the hurricane uh, kicked it in reverse. I'm backing this up on purpose. There's midnight. We go forward into around 1 o'clock. Notice some of the numbers there. You can see places like Dublin showing 50, 60 plus mile per hour wind gusts. Uh, with the latest track here, you can see the, the actual eye here, a little adjusted farther toward the south on this, is running more like through Hawkinsville here at this point. And then we go forward into around three in the morning. You can see Macon getting in on the act here. These are numbers very similar to what we saw with Irma last year. So it'll be those uh, same kind of wind speeds and the gusts, same kind of damage. So it'd be tree limbs, maybe some trees down, power lines down. And of course, what we showed you out of Crawford County a minute ago is not even from the brunt of Michael yet. That was from a tornado uh, that was on the outside edge in that track. Of course, it's not officially confirmed from the National Weather Service, but I've seen enough of those to see them snapped halfway up with the trees and have followed the rotation. It was unbelievable as it came through there. There's a look at around four in the morning. You can see still the potential for gusty winds and then it starts to move closer toward Augusta by five to six. But as I talked about earlier, even though most of the rain may still be wrapping around on the east side, we should at least have some gusty winds on the backside, maybe still possibly a tropical storm force. And even there, you can see right there, that's at four or five in the morning, still making showing 50 plus mile per hour winds possible. And it may be actually getting on into mid morning before things start to get lower. I think it's gonna be calmer in you know, eight o'clock, seven, eight o'clock. But as far as like getting back to just a casual breeze, it may be on into the day tomorrow before that happens. As far as rainfall is concerned, that is a secondary issue. That's not uh, the biggest problem. It's mainly wind. You can see anywhere from three inches as an average with most places here with the European model with the GFS. It's a similar scenario here. As we go forward here, it comes your way as soon as it loads in. If it doesn't, you get the idea. Uh, anywhere from two to three inches. Again, a fast mover, so not one that's a big flooding uh, concern. So hopefully it stays that way. But once again, as we go on through tonight, for starting now really in our southeastern or southwestern counties and going forward, the wind should pick up more and more. And once we get on into the evening hours and overnight, it's gonna continue like this. And it may be on into tomorrow morning before we see things Calm down. We're going back over to you guys, right? That's right. Thank right. you, Ben. All right. Thanks for watching. Of course, we'll continue to keep a close eye on Hurricane Michael as it rolls through Georgia. We will be with you throughout the evening. And once things and conditions start to deteriorate, of course, we will cut in and bring you full coverage. And remember to download the 13W MAZ mobile app for any updates, alerts, and to check the list of school closings and curfews for your area.